Good afternoon and welcome to the very first installment of the Blackwell Global Educational Series. In today's educational video, what we'll be doing is discussing the Forex market. So basically we'll be discussing what the Forex market actually is, how the Forex market works, and some of the participants in the Forex market. So first things first, you may actually be wondering what this Forex market actually is. While Forex can be given several different titles, some people refer to Forex as the currency exchange market, some people would like to refer to Forex as just Forex, and then you've got others who refer to Forex as the FX market. In the FX market, basically what happens is one currency is traded for another currency, and traders can profit from either buying a currency which they think will increase in valuation, or a trader can sell a currency which they think will decrease in value. One of the most well-known facts about the Forex market is that it's the largest financial market in the world and it has a daily turnover of nearly 5 trillion US dollars. The FX market also has several different participants and they can include investment banks such as UBS and Deutsche. And then you have central banks who are basically there to monitor the health of their domestic currency. So for example you have the Federal Reserve who look after the US dollar the ECB, the European Central Bank who look after the Euro, and you've got the Bank of Japan who look after the Yen. That's not it though, because you also have companies who deal with imports and exports and basically need to exchange their currency to pay for items. And then you have com also have organizations of overseas offices who need to pay operational costs such as staff like wages. And then finally we have retail investors who basically can be people who are traveling on holiday and they need to change our currency. Okay, so what this chart shows is basically the average daily trade and volume in the financial markets. And you can see that Forex is by far the biggest financial market there is and they say it's nearly 200 times combined the other financial markets to put together. Okay, so in Forex, what actually is traded? Well, in short, what you're doing is trading one currency for another currency. So, for example, if you think the euro will go up against the USD, then you will buy the euro USD. However, if you think the euro will decrease against the USD, then what you can do here is sell the euro USD. There are eight major currencies in the FX market. You have the US dollar, the European currency, which is the euro, you've got the Japanese yen, the British pound sterling, which they name the GBP. You've got the Swiss franc, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar, and finally the New Zealand dollar. Okay, and there's also seven major currency pairs. You've got the Euro USD, which they nickname the Fiber. You've got the USD Yen, which they nickname the Yen. The GBP USD, which is referred to as the Cable the US dollar and the Swiss franc, which they refer to as the Swissy. You've got the United States dollar and the Canadian dollar, which is nicknamed the Looney. The Australian dollar and the US dollar is nicknamed the Aussie. And you've got the New Zealand dollar and the US dollar, which is referred to as the Kiwi. There's also minor currency pairs though, which basically don't involve the US dollar. You've got the Euro GBP, which is nicknamed the Candy the GBP Yen, which is basically nicknamed the Pound Yen, the UK Sterling and the Australian Dollar is basically nicknamed the Pound Aussie, the New Zealand Yen and the Japanese Yen would combine to be the Kiwi Yen, and the Australian Dollar and the New Zealand Dollar would be nicknamed the Aussie Kiwi. So you may be wondering how a currency trade actually works. Well, let's take, for example, the GBP USD for this example. The first currency, which is the GBP, would be the base currency, and you've got the second listed currency, which is the quote currency, and this example would be the US dollar. So, for example, if I was to place an order for the GBP USD, what I would be doing is buying the GBP, so I'd be buying the UK sterling, and I'd be selling the, U the US dollar. You may be wondering why I'm talking so much about the US dollar. Well, basically the US dollar is one half of every major currency pair and it constitutes towards 75% of all FX trades. 
Some of the reasons why this is is because the US economy is the largest economy in the world, but also the US dollar is the reserve currency of the world. According to the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, the US dollar equates to nearly 62% of the world's foreign exchange reserves. Okay, so the FX market is open for 24 hours. Trading basically starts when the market's open on, in Australia on Sunday evening, and then the FX markets close when the markets close in New York on a Friday evening. There are typically three tra different trading sessions during the day. You've got the Asian session, the European session, and the US session. The Asian session is open from 11 a.m. GMT to 8 a.m. GMT. The European session is from 7 a.m. GMT to 4 p.m. GMT. And you've got the US session, which is open from 12 p.m. GMT to 10 p.m. GMT. Basically, the two busiest trading times of the day is when the Asian session is closing and the European session is opening. So that's between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. GMT. And then you've also got the overlap between the US session and the European session. So from 12 p.m. from 12 p.m. GMT to 4 p.m. GMT, it's also a very liquid trading session. Okay, so some of the advantages to the Forex market. Well, firstly, there's 24 hour trading. This allows high liquidity around the clock. And another main example is that you have an ability to profit from both a rising and a fallen market. So what this means is that you can both buy a currency which you think is going to increase in value, and you can also sell a currency which you think is going to decrease in value. Finally, there's a fast execution of orders. And there's two different types of market analysis. So basically what we have is fundamental analysis which, makes, which accounts for economic analysis. And you've got technical analysis, which is basically chart analysis. So you may be wondering now what fundamental anal analysis actually is. Well, basically what you're doing is analyzing economic, social and political factors that can affect the value of a currency. So basically some people like to think of fundamental analysis as a way of analyzing a currency through the strengths or weaknesses of that country's economy. So for example, if a piece of economic news is released stating that the United States unemployment rate has hit a record low, then this would most likely strengthen the US dollar. However, if a piece of economic news announces that unemployment rate has hit a record high, then this would most likely devalue the US dollar. And finally, to conclude, we also have technical analysis, and basically technical analysis is the framework in which traders study price movements. So basically the theory is that a person can look at the historical price movements of a currency pair and they'll use this information to help determine the future potential price which this currency pair can move to. So if I took a look at this New Zealand US dollar which we call the, which we call the Kiwi on our daily chart, technically what I can see here is that the currency pair very rarely goes below this level which we call the support level. So basically what a trader can do is see that when the currency pair hits this support level here, that it very rarely will break through this level. So this means it could be a good opportunity to long, which means to buy the currency pair, because you would have an expectation that it could only increase in value from here.